Hi, this is Steve, K8BZ. In this video, we're going to discuss an issue that's been reported by several users of the KMXL, and that is uh, spontaneous resets to the factory defaults for no apparent reason. I've been using this KMXL for about a month, and it did happen to me once in that period of time. I know another ham that has a KMXL, and it happened to him at least once also. And doing a search online, uh, apparently this has happened to uh, quite a few KMXL users randomly. doesn't happen often, but uh, it does happen occasionally uh, with many users of the KMXL. And it can be a little annoying once you get all those command settings set the way you want them to have to go back through and reset everything. Uh, so we're going to discuss a way to uh, minimize the inconvenience should that happen to you. And th there are other reasons it could happen other than just uh, uh, spontaneously occurring in the KMXL. It could be that the internal battery that preserves the settings uh, uh, goes dead and it will at then it will uh, revert to the factory defaults every time you uh, turn the TNC on. So uh, there are other issues. Uh, I haven't noticed this in any of the other Cantronics TNCs that I've used and I've used uh, the Cam Plus, uh, KPC3, KPC3 Plus, the 9612 and I have not noticed any spontaneous resets that have occurred at any time other than when the internal battery went dead. So uh, appears to be something in the Cam XL that's causing this, but uh, let's discuss what to do about it. Now this takes a little time to do this, but uh, I do this with all my TNCs that I use. Uh, I always do this with them, so in case there ever is a need to restore the settings, it can be done fairly quickly. Uh, first thing I do is a display setting at the command prompt and get all of the entire list of all of the command settings. Then holding the control key and typing the letter A will highlight them all. Holding the control key and typing the letter C will copy them all. And then I paste all these commands in a notepad file. Uh, now once I have them in the notepad file, let me open the notepad file that I keep for this purpose. Once I have them all pasted in the notepad file, I'll go through and delete uh, almost all of the commands that I know I'm not going to change. Uh, some of them I know I won't change. Um, the, um, as a matter of fact, almost all of them are fine with the factory defaults, but there are a lot of them that aren't. All of the identification commands and the uh, connect text commands and the node text commands and the bulletin board uh, connect text, and whether you want the mail option, you have mail option on or off, and there, there are quite a few others uh, that will have a specific setting. I, I actually keep my users and max users, I keep users at two or three, and max users only at about one more than, than whatever my users command is set. Uh, so uh, to have to go in and hand key in all those settings can be a nuisance. So I will delete most, most all of the ones I can find that I know I am going to leave the factory defaults on. Now there are some commands like num nodes, max users, my remote call. Uh, those will cause a software reset. So I take those out of the notepad file and I put them right at the top. And I put in there the following commands must be entered by hand. Now I'm going to go back to the terminal here for a minute. So if I change num nodes, num nodes to three, it's going to cause a software reset. Uh, so you need to get those pulled out of there where you can put those in individually. So num nodes, max users, I believe, is another one. Uh, max users, let's say I make max users. No, max users is good. Let's make it four just so we get a change. Yes, it does. If it changes, it does cause a software reset. Change it back to three. Now, let me explain... Uh, what we do here. Once you have this file saved and you've deleted out most of the commands that you can find that you're going to keep the factory default settings. Unproto is another good one. Unproto call you may have digipeters you want in your unproto path. But I'll put all of the ones that cause a software reset at the front of the list. And let's say we lose our factory defaults. I'm going to put those in individually at the front of the list and, and 
do all of those. And in my case, there's only four. Now, I also have my uh, calibration settings in here. I'll go uh, save my calibration settings so I don't need to recalibrate uh, the audio output levels on transmit. I can just change it to those numbers and I'm good to go. Now, all of the rest of these, if we lose all our factory defaults, all I have to do is go down the list and with the mouse, copy them all. I'm going to do a right click and copy them. Then I'm going to go back to my terminal screen. And I'm just going to do a control V and paste them. And it's going to go through and reset all of those commands to whatever was saved in that file. And that's all there is to it. Now all of my commands are that quickly right back to where they were before uh, before I lost all the commands. Now another thing you might want to do is connect to the bulletin board. And I'm just going to list my messages here. There's a few messages that I keep on the bulletin board at all times. In this particular list, it's only number two where I have a brief message that describes uh, the station where it's located. I have another message in there, number five, that explains how to use the VHF HF gateway. Now that, that message is fairly long with some specific instructions. So if a, if a new user connects to the bulletin board and wants to uh, use the gateway, cross, cross band gateway from HF to VHF or VHF to HF, the, they can uh, uh, read this message and it'll give them some information on how to do that. Now what I do is those messages are also copied in this same notepad file. Here's the one on the use of the VHF to HF gateway. And let's see, where's the other one here? On the, uh, here it is. And I'll put the whole thing in, all the way from SB for sending a bulletin. And I'm going to go all the way down to where it has the slash EX. I'm going to copy that. Whoops. I cut it instead of copied. Let's try it again. Copy. And we'll go back to the terminal program. Connect to K, KBZ-1. And then all I have to do is paste it. And that message is restored. So let's list the messages. You'll see this same message is in there twice. Number 2 is the same message as number 26 because it just put, put the message back in. So if you save those in a notepad file, uh, keep them in a convenient location. You can restore your KMXL to the settings that you want very quickly. Uh, it might take you a while to get them all set up. And especially watch for when you paste your message uh, at the command prompt. Actually, when you spa uh, paste your commands at the command prompt, you want to watch, scroll back through that, and if you see where it did a software reset where you get the sign-on message from the TNC, find which command caused that, delete that out of the list that you paste, and make sure you put that up in the individual list that you have to key in individually. And uh, again, like I said, these are mine. Uh, interface terminal, and actually I'm not sure that's even a command in the CAM XL. That might be a holdover from the CAM Plus. Let's check. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, yep, it still has new user, BBS, uh, and so on. So, yep, that is that is one. I don't think I want to do that. Interface terminal. Uh, I didn't change the command setting, so there was no software reset. But find all of those that do cause a software reset. Put those up at the front of the list. Enter those individually. Then you can paste the rest at the command prompt to store, restore all your commands. And then copy and paste your bulletins that you want back in your BBS. And that gets you back up and running with minimal disturbance. Of course, if your CAMXL is installed at a remote location, that's you can't do this remotely. Uh, you have to go get it all at a baud rate, and then, then you can restore your commands. But I, I think typically the CAMXL wouldn't be in a remote location anyways. Uh, it's possible that it could, but uh, I think the, the XL is mostly a TNC that will be used at a home station. So thanks for watching. I hope you find that helpful. And uh, good luck with your CAM XL, and we'll see you in the next video.